Hello and welcome to Hearts of Iron 4, the Kaiserite mod with Bulgaria once more. Yes, thank you, Kaiserite team. Tell me everything I want to know. Alright, so let's take a look at the new tree, shall we? I go a new. Bulgarian land forces. Hmm. Okay, not certain, but I think this one is a little bit better. There's a research slot, there is one over here. Okay, that's very cool. Military pensions. During the Vel Creek, Bulgaria had sent all that it had available, with saleable pa patron on its population, in the military and sent to the front lines. While this had been a massive boon during the war, this had hurt us following the conclusion of the Vel Creek, where the number of soldiers who were received their pensions were more than enough to diverse significant amount of funding. We will be fine, no worries. So, well, we're gonna go this way, maybe. Critical population, that's cool. Mechanized, sport deck, a research slot. Okay, we're gonna rush for this then. How many do we have? Three. Okay, let's go with this. We have 18 troops. We would like to have at least 24. Let's switch you out to the good guys. Okay, you're dismissed. Let's train a few more. And dismiss the horsemen because they are gonna hurt my morale. Okay, how many people do I need for that? I think I need 24 for this, for Romania and Serbia. And I don't know, 3 here, and 4 here. Hmm. Okay. Let's have 12 divisions, and I'm gonna give them high equipment priority. Good. Then, I'm gonna start building some convoys. Research, basic mechanical tools, machine, tools, whatever. I need you. And doctrines. Well, I usually love the spear of firepower and trench warfare. I actually love every single one of them, but I think I'm gonna go with this one, mostly because I want more recruitable population and because, honestly, I don't know, maybe I could go with this one because we are going to have a significant amount of infantry. Hmm. This is incredibly easy actually because if you go here, auto supply, organization for infantry. Mass charge, yeah, that would be amazing. Especially if we don't have enough manpower for it. Infantry recovery, right? That's good. Organization is cool. Combat with, always a good thing to have. Critical population 5%. And recovery rate. What about you? What do you give? Supply consumption, organization for tanks, reinforcements rate, maximum planning, I don't care about that. Supply consumption, combat width, same as this. 
And let's get some breakthrough organization. So does infantry. Mechanized wave. Mechanized forces are ideal for conducting the rapid advance needed to properly exploit breakthroughs. Both for supporting the armored forces and for securing the flanks of the bridge. Fine. Hmm. Organization loss when moving and reinforced rate. Yeah, I guess that's cool. But we're gonna go with mobile warfare. Mostly because I'm very familiar with it. Yeah, this gives you organization, more organization. It also gives you max planning, I don't care about that. This one's gonna kind be kind of useless, but this one gives you all infantry, organization plus 10. We're gonna have so much organization once we reach this. And then we can go this way. Because the icons are funny. Okay, we're gonna have some factories here. There we have it. What do we need? Some iron. Let's purchase it from the Germans. Who are our commanders? So, let's take a look. We have... Nikola Nedev, who has pretty decent defense. Well, this guy is rank 3. Vladimir Stolchev, though, he has a little bit more defensive skill. I don't want this guy because he has old god. And I need some experience in my generals. So, my field marshals, we have the well field marshal Boris. Okay. Ferdinand first. Guess you're gonna have to do that. Let's paint you black, because I like to have my Field Marshal black, first Field Marshal, and you red, because my first army should always be red. So what can we have? Skirmishes, probing attack, power drops, and camouflage. Well, let's go with this, when we have enough command points. We will get them soon enough, mark my words. Okay, I want you all to store yourself here, and here. And let's unpause. No template for what? Support equipment. Um, okay, we're gonna have you here and here. We're gonna have this like so. And you're gonna be above it because actually support equipment is harder to come by than artillery. So, the Tsardom of Bulgaria. Following the end of the Battle Creek, Bulgaria had emerged victorious and had suddenly found herself in a golden age, with the successful establishment of a Bulgarian hegemony over the Balkans, with the death of Prime Minister Vasil Radoslavov in 1927, Alexander Malinov was able to take power, a known Germanophobe, Malinov and his close allies saw Germany as a threat, intent on making Bulgaria little more than a palm, and thus during the hubris of their golden age starts to drift away from the Germans, which saw the cooling of relations between the two former allies. Now Bulgaria has found herself in a precarious position with little to no allies in the Balkans. Basically the same positions the Germans were in after the death of Bismarck. Despite remaining the dominant military power in the area and the, al the alien economy, which weakens Bulgarian's position as her old enemies circle, like vultures, eagerly and hungrily awaiting the opportunity to reclaim their old territory. They have no right to this territory, except the Greeks. They can, they maybe have... No, they don't have a right to this either. This was our territory, all of it, except maybe Dobruja. Glory to Bulgaria and the Tsar. Increasing stability. Bulgaria has experienced an increase in stability 
With confidence in the Bulgarian government's ability building and political discourage turning to more mundane affairs. Well, that's good. Weekly stability goes down weekly. That's bad. That's actually kind of stupid. I don't like it. And yes, I'm going to complain about everything I don't like about this mod. We have to actually check when Boris's son was born. Are they gonna address that? I mean, he was born during that time, I believe. The assassination of President Kerensky. Kerensky has just been shot and killed on the way to the Senate. The assailant has taken down the police, but the go, the go, and intentions of the attacker are unknown. Despite his massive unpopularity amongst the Russian people due to butchered land reform and ineffective rule, Kerensky was nevertheless able to hold the country together for years. And his death has thrown Russia into chaos. The senators are already discussing the possible replacement to Kerensky. New coalitions are being formed, both between the left and the right, while military men like Dakilin, Vervak and Kornilov are just one step away from intervening and dissolving the democracy and save Mother Russia. Barbaric. Indeed. How many men do I need on this border? We do need three people here and three people here, so six people will be enough. Let's take three of you, three of you. You're gonna be a different army and I'm gonna give you to someone who is very good at attacking. I guess Nikola Nedev is the one here. I'm gonna give you the blue anchor. I want six of you here and three of you here. Move. Oh yeah, I do need to reinforce the Serbian border, otherwise we're just gonna fall apart. So I want you to drop and go here. Tungsten. Hmm. Maybe I should purchase some, but I want to keep my factories in check for now because I want to have at least one of those things built. When will you be built? The 23rd of May. That's never gonna happen. Our ideology has grown. Well, we don't need this right now. I need to save some political power to increase my mobilization law so we can actually stand a chance against enemies who want me dead. George V, the last king of Great Britain and Ireland to have ruled the home isles themselves, has passed while in exile in Canada. The first Windsor king, his reign shall be remembered with sorrow and sadness, as during it Britain lost both the Veld Creek and his homeland. The crown was inherited by Edward, Prince of Wales, who now styles himself Edward VIII. King Edward is a vengeful and ambitious man, and not, and not, no, what? Oh, not on good terms with Prime Minister Mackenzie King. He lives on a go of avenging his father and conquering the British Isles, and thus is quite popular amongst the British exiles in Canada, amongst others. Interesting. Yeah, I can actually imagine syndicalists taking over Britain. I can imagine the same thing for France, but, you know, not Britain. Let's see if Germany is going to win this war. But our goal is simple here. We want Serbia, Romania, Greece, and the Ottoman Empire. Then I'll consider this campaign a victory. I might continue to gather troops and save Germany if they need my help. Okay, what do you give me? Weekly stability. Oh. Wow. I actually think all of that kind of sucks. How long will this take? 180 days. Half an year. And my stability is... fine. So, let's go on advanced artillery. Artillery has been key component in the war ever since the Napoleonic Wars and had played a critical role during the Veld Creek. Investing in this technology would be extremely helpful, as artillery is able to be fired towards distance that infantry cannot reach. Yeah, but tanks can. The Bulgarian land forces 
Indeed, the Bulgarian land forces are pride of Bulgaria, with many preferring our great nation as Prussia of the Balkans, and the military with a state. Bulgaria had sent much of its able-bodied men to fight in the Belt Creek when it was able to assert its military supremacy and had emerged dominant in the Balkans, yet as a result had incurred a bounty of high military pensions. It is clear that we must take no examining both the status of readiness of our army as our enemies, who surround us like eager vultures waiting to attack, will be quick to pounce on any sort of mistake we might take. The institution of reform must continue so that Bulgarian land forces can forever maintain their dominance in the Balkans. Nanosh Veterans Associations Rally The Bulgarian Veterans Association is an influential organization in Bulgaria, consisting mostly of soldiers and officers of the Bulgarian forces of the Belt Creek. There, these men are largely renowned as heroes throughout the Bulgaria. They are rallied today in Sofia, consisting largely of patriotic displays drawing larger support from the populace. We must keep this in mind for the days to come. And what do you give? Base war support, cool. Electoral gridlock in France. The Commune of France is the world's leading syndicalist nation. Right, because Russia isn't. I do wish that Russia was led by Kolchak, though. They've switched his portrait a little. It's nothing. That's nothing, I still prefer Kochak than the other guys. Somehow liked him, I don't know why. Okay. United as a federation of city communes and directed by the committee de Salut Public, the chief executive ever since in inception. However, the second commune was not uniform in the policy. Numerous factors across each one, with their own idea of which path France should take, as a time for revenge against Germany and the world revolution closed in. The CGT election of 1936 is said to be very important. It was so important, in fact, that none of the four factions could acquire a majority. Much like before the election, a coalition must be found, but now... But how will this change the shape of the community's politics? Only the men in the CP, uh, CSP itself know. Interesting. The Fifth Anglo-Afghani War After the Valkyrie as the British Raj collapsed into turmoil and warfare, neighboring kingdom of Afghanistan took advantage of this as an opportunity to seize Pahawar and Quetta. Both border regions of the Dominion, however, the Afghani government's attempt to modernize over the last decade have been over the last decade have been met with fierce resistance from the conservative elements within the country. King Amunwell Khan now hopes to use this turmoil in Delhi, following the death of George V to his advantage by repeating the success of the fifth of uh, the fourth Anglo-Afghan war. The king hopes to, to silence the conservative opposition and bring new lands to the crown. However, interventional experts do not put many hopes on the tiny mountain nation winning this conflict. The economic collapse. Horrid news has reached us. Apparently, the Berlin Stock Exchange, in what many consider an extremely abrupt turn of events, has plunged economically, sending the economy of German Empire and the countries within its sphere of downward spiral. Of course, these effects were not con contained in to the German sphere, as Germany's trade partners, which include many nations both in Europe and around the world, have also seen their economic tank. Bulgaria has not been left unscared. After we have also experienced severe economic drown downturn, international observers and enemies alike are closely watching our nation, with some calling this the beginning of the end of the Bulgarian Golden Age. In any case, we must turn to our to our <coughs> to we must turn our gaze towards our every collapsing economy. Last, we end up losing both the trust of our people and our dominance within the Balkans. 
we cannot fail. This will give us minus... Wow. Okay, we're gonna wait before that happens. How long can we wait? 11 days. Yeah, we, we can wait. Thanks. Okay. I, I am not certain that's gonna turn out well. Okay, so where to go next? Baba Martha Day, a pagan ritual by origin, the one of the oldest continuing tradition in Europe. Baba Martha Day, which occurs annually on the 1st of March, is a holiday in which Martinitsas, sure, are worn throughout the month of March, and tales of the story of Baba Martha, a sister, wife of the great longhorn beetle, and a small longhorn beetle, due to her anger at being considered old by a shepherd, Baba Marta became infuriated and let out snow which led to the shepherd and her folk to freeze in the mountains. In order to celebrate this occasion, cold festivities also occur on the 9th and 25th of March, with people celebrating the coming of spring. Interesting indeed. Also, it's 3rd of March, we didn't get an event for the Liberation Day, like last time. And we can no longer purchase so much steel from Germany. Still, two factories is good. But now we do need to reform this economy. Down from the stability, okay, we, we can live with that. Yes, we could have also waited. Restoration of, of democracy in Austra Australasia. The Australasian Confederation has been under authoritarian rule of government, General William Birdwood, since the British invocation of the emergency protocols in 1924, considered by many in the nation to have been heavy tanned response to the Manoborn common syndicalist uprising. Beardwood finally relented to call for an open election, leading to the expected results of Stanley Bruce's United Australian Party. Yeah, I know it's Australian, but I'm gonna call it Australian. Achieving the majority of government in the uh, in the Canberra Parliament, Bruce is expected to have a tough time ahead of him, with labor unrest on the rise and calls for revocation of Brentwood's more egregious restrictions on personal liberty. Oh, they have a new flag. That looks cool and interesting. I did like the old flag, white instead of blue. And they still kept the symbols here, so I'm not certain why they didn't just keep the flag. Maneuvers in the Carpathians. We can take a look at that in a moment. Let's uh, go ahead and go for motorized. Motorized infantry is crucial in that it provides protection from enemy fire and can help transfer our troops from one place to another at swift speed. This gives you mechanized models. We can go with mechanized and rockets, actually. I'm not certain. I don't know how long this campaign is going to last. I don't think it's going to last that long. The Treaty of Bucharest of 1918 officially ended the Volkrieg for Romania, but at what cost? Romania was now dominated by German and Australian, uh, <coughs> Austrian industries. Most of our coastline was annexed by Bulgaria and the Carpathian Mountains separated Romania from Hungary were put under the Austro-Hungarian control. I actually don't think that this changed anything in the borders. I mean, they looked pretty small during the Great War, compared to now, I mean. I do believe this was part of Romania back then. Right, well, let's continue later. The humiliation Romania endured resulted in devolving into a national populist dictatorship, plied by the conductor Cornelius Cordrano. Cordrano and his Iron God set out to restore Romania to what they say should have been a titan on the Balkans. That's my title. Their first major, major move is a large-scale military exercise, seemingly in preparation to seize the Carpathians, and perhaps the lands beyond. 
or changes unthinkable though the death of Pius the eleventh all Christendom mourns the death of his holiness Pope Pius the eleventh who died following the heart attack after having been in declining health for the past several years something which reportedly worsened following the Black Monday the Holy Father will soon be interred with the rest of his predecessor in the tomb of popes until the next pope can be chosen all right until the next pope can be chosen the papal state will be ruled by a college of cardinals in rome the succession of his holiness is made all the more important due to the catholic church's role in government the reborn nation as well as its vehement opposition to syndicalism a force which has divided the north of italy along the river po and seeks to once again reunite the Italian peninsula. Terrible. The First International Congress. The representatives from numerous syndicalist socialist nations have gathered in Paris today, in which might just be a defining moment in the history of the ideology. The French Commune has invited numerous countries to the first official gathering of the members of the Third International to discuss political foreign matters and cooperate to separate socialism further. The French opened the international with a powerful speech well good for them who rules france now though they also have this guy <laughs> okay which way should we take let's go with this actually i do want this at some point but that's gonna follow after we have enough to build our nation and produce our weapons, which are right now in a very small capacity. 35%, minus 15% because of Black Monday, that is horrible. Catholic faithful in Rome, bred on a sight of relief at the Senate chapel's chimney bowed forth white smoke signifying the election of a new pope. A short time later it was announced that the pious and the popular Elgano Cardinal Penselli had become his holiness, Pope Pius XII, leader of the Catholic Church and head of the states of Rome, Saint Peter, as a new occupant. Okay, next. Logistics, field hospitals and engineers are all crucial support elements to any division. If we are to fight smarter and allow for the, pre uh, for the preservation of our men and emerge victorious, we must makes trades in the field of support equipment. I do want to switch to this economic affair next. And I also want some manpower because honestly we don't have enough to support all the men we want. Anyway, let's go with this. And continue forth as we are going to win this. Why is this so... so... Quiet. There you go. I'm still not gonna put music on. In fact, I think. Yeah, it looks fine. It sounds fine. So, in 177 days, we will have better artillery for everyone. International Workers' Day. Today is the 1st of May, universally known as the International Workers' Day, which celebrates the efforts of the lower class laborers by labor movement, which established to commemorate the high market affair on the 4th of May. Day Day itself a public holiday in syndicalist nations worldwide. Well, sure, we cannot actually do that right now. I want to have at least a hundred. There you go, so we can go up in early mobilization, and then we're going to choose this. Good luck. So let's draw up a battle plan, and also we have enough of those, so let's purchase that camouflage expert for you. Let's have charismatic for you. Can you, my man? We're going to have nothing. Fortress busters. There are no fortresses in our border. Lower popularity. 
Well, the sooner we get this, the better, I guess. Oh, but that doesn't give you a weekly stability race. Only when it's on disaster. Oh, wait. Okay, that's stability. I was looking at the wrong window there. Oh, this is so bad. Okay, let's just wait and see what's gonna happen. Investing in the support elements. Good. And let's go here. Georgi Rakowski Military Academy. Based... Alright. Let's go down here. And here. We don't have any civilian factories right now. Right. Based in Sofia, the Georgi Rakowski Military Academy in Bulgaria is the oldest military institution of the highest education. By pouring funds into the academy, we can assure the quality of our officers are better than ever. Okay. Shouldn't it be that the quality of our officers are better than ever. Yesterday a successful revolution was achieved in Siam by, by uh, Kali. A officer, the national uh, the intelligentsia, who called himself Hanna Raston, People's Party, the heirs of the throne of the chief of the politics, were placed under arrest. The king, who was not in the Bangkok when the cope was carried, uh, carried out, turned out to the capital and accepted the vote accompanying. The present upheaval of Siam is evidently a political expression of the Malaysia product by the pressure of the economic crisis as they tried to move themselves from absolute monarchy towards self-government. It is unknown whether the affair securing the parliamentary constitu constitution, the provisional government went prosper or devolve into dictatorship. Oh, it is known. So you're a nationalist nation now. After the complete collapse of the Polish government oh, love of following the Black Monday disaster, Poland found itself complete anarchy, which many different politician factions vying for power in the vacuum of the old kingdom. This fighting has come to a close today as the Polish nationalist forces have claimed victory, formally announcing the creation of a new regime from the abandoned shape of the Palace of Versailles. Of Warsaw, I was thinking about something else. The new nationalist government has um, rattled their neighbors with immediate proclamation of the greatest Polish state, intentions to unify all Polish people under one flag. Whether or not the new government can make good on their promise remains to be seen. Surely the Germans won't stand for this. Oswald Mosley elected chairman of the TUC. In 1936, the Trade Union Congress in the Union of Britain was made out of the decisive long-time chairman of the TUC, Philip Snowden, declared his resignation, opposing the four major factions in the Union, Maximists, Autonomists, Federationists and Congressionists, to butt head over the position. And as the dust settled, also Mosley, leader of the Maximalists and a Totalist ideology, has been appointed as the new chairman. Mosley's faction supports a strong central government and full state control of the economy and are much more in favor of military, uh, military actions than British nationalism uh, than any other faction. That's very interesting. So, Mosley, is that you? Yeah, look at him. He looks like a snob. Like a typical British man. Okay, let's have this. And a battle plan towards Serbia. I'm gonna have a battle plan towards Greece, but most likely we're just gonna take this over and then we're gonna reassign the troops. Where to next? Well, after Georgi Rakowski's academy. Oldest military institution, higher communication. Yes, we read that. So, the economic affairs. 
Next, let's go for artillery. We need better artillery. Then we're gonna improve our military here. Okay, 35 days. The downturn of the German economy following the plunge of the Berlin Stock Exchange has affected many nations within Europe. Unfortunately, we have not been able to weather the storm and have been hit just as bad as many other nations. Okay, that's interesting. If we are to make a full recovery, we must take steps to straighten our economy. We must indeed. So, let's look at the Baltics right now. What's going on here? I can see some Russians. Wawr Kornilov is the leader right now. Well, let's hope we can keep the Russians steady. Union syndicalists achieve Italian majority. The fifth Congress of the Socialist Republic of Italy has finally come to a close. After a long statement, a state forced a compromise between the Union Socialist Cristina and Unione Syndicalista factions. Palmiro Tugafi of the, uh, of the Unione Syndicalista Party of Italy will maintain their position as chairman. Though a difficult Congress still remains a, bl a blow to the government's stability as a whole. No surprise there. We are still on Tim Jones, by the way, in case you're wondering. So. Coup d'etat. Okay. Uh, yes, we did decide to go this way mostly because I want some military factories. For the day is done. Go. Okay. Pipum Sankram's coup d'etat. While the, uh, the Siamese revolution itself was a success, its political implication is an absolute mess. From the yellow covered desire affair, which the old royalists uh, set aside, set aside, used to build a red scare against the parliamentarians, army chief Ulan Falem Strokham intervened just in time before the situation devolved into, uh, into an open civil war and declared a martial war national wide. I hope they do well. Don't fall into the syndicalists. I wish there was a political map view mode. The Bulgarian Agrarian National Union picked. Okay, following the disastrous effect of Black Monday, it seems as though our economically tenuous uh, position has only caused us harm. With the members of the Bulgarian Agrarian Nationalist Union uh, picketing the protests outside of the office, of key liberal officials, officials demanding that the government intervene on behalf of the farmers. This has done little more than place greater pressure on us while also separating the distillery within our nation. Oh, so it's because we went this way? Well, this is gonna take us some penalties for us as well. Indochina declares independence. After the Weltkriegs, Germany seized the former French Indochina, but stability didn't restore until the German intervention in 1926 crushed the revolutions in South China. Now, Indochinese nationalists and leftists under the coalition called Viet Nicht rise up against the colonial regime. Nguyen An Ing, the head of Viet Ninh, declared independence of Indochina in Saigon. After playing homage to the resistance of Asian people, he condemned the brutal German opposition of the Asian people and, aff and affirmed Indochinese people's commitment to their unity of Asia. Most observers agree with the German media that they are just some frompous peasants. German military forces or even polit politicians in the Far East can easily suppress these revolts, or so-called Beitkongs. Hmm. Okay. Command power. Are you gonna cost us political points? Hope not. Let's rush for this other research. 
Tensions surrounding industrialism. Several discontents have been in the air within Bulgaria, with many of our peasants and factory workers experiencing poor economic conditions due to the economic crash now dubbed Black Monday. This has only been made worse due to our decision to of beginning the industrialization of the nation. Members were mostly peasants and farmers. Well, we. Uh, I'm sorry, I seem to have skipped the peasant. A nation with opposition coming from Bulgarian Agrarian National Union and its members, who are mostly peasants, farmers. Well, we have managed to temporarily quell most of the discontent. We must hope that our policy of industrialization succeeds, lest we fail to pull ourselves out of this economic crisis and risk the people's turning on us. Well, I hope we don't, because we are awesome. Next. Okay, after we do this, I think we should head for this and this, because we do... I could actually go like so and give them all of Dobruja. International Harbor Tribune. The in the Chinese revolt succeeds. Within the tenacity of the fury of the Viet Minh, the troops from driving German troops out of the nearly all strategic points on the Indo-Chinese peninsula, the German former of foreign office finally agreed to meet the leaders of the rebellion and offer a full independence to <coughs> Serio? uh, seriously there to the entire land. They claim. Thus, today the creation of the Indo-Chinese Union was confirmed by the Viet Minh. To the cheers of the Vietnamese people who had come to witness the historic event. The country's future is yet uncertain, but rumors of Barstin allegements are starting to spread throughout the diplomatic canals, and the world tries to measure the impact of these events of Asia. Yeah, nothing bad can happen. Oops, we were wrong. Humat von Nuch. Is that those guys? Going in the ology. Again, we can't afford that right now. Okay. Let's go with this. So, what do you do? It is important, okay. Founded on the 1st of October 1888, the University of Sofia is Bulgaria's oldest highest education institution. By pouring government funds into the development and expansion of the services offered by the university, we can allow for education of our citizens. Definitely can do that. Hey, look at that, we almost have a division ready. We are not gonna actually send you down yet, because we are gonna upgrade those things. I think I want some engineers here. There you go. We have enough artillery. We still cannot purchase any tungsten though. Unfortunate indeed. So we shall wait until Iron Guard Romania falls. Okay, do we have any more research slots anywhere? Well, we do have this one, but I guess we cannot choose it. Okay. Nothing here. And nothing here. The absolute must power in the focus. Okay, well, why? Why couldn't I choose this? I mean, I was gonna go with Germany, or at least some nationalists. Reconciliation with Germany. Hmm. The liberals and Malinov had very much soared Bulgarian-German relations due to their rampart. Germanophobia. We must send a delegation to the German Empire in an attempt to reverse these diplomatic blunders. It will not be easy, however. Do 
do we have anyone who can actually give us socialism? Social democratics, uh, social liberals. They do not give us anything. Can I switch the head of government in this? Well, uh, we will have to wait. Well, what we have was next, which means that the Baltic duchies are now united again. Eternal autocrats. Okay, that's the same as Russia, so I'm not certain why. John N. Granner, elected president of the United States of America, despite the massive instability rampart in the nation ever since the Great Depression. Okay, we're going to take a look at you in a moment. Okay, let's go for some manpower. So go here, here, then we're going to choose this and this. This one is actually cool as well, so let's start with you. And, and, construction, hmm. Go with this. Actually, I do want, no, actually that's what I want. Right. Despite the massive instability rampart in the nation ever since the Great Depression, in 1925 the presidential election went forward and the voting results are clear. The Democratic candidate John Nance Gardner is the 32nd President of the United States. Okay, elections in Italy. So, Gardner was defeated in 1932 Democratic Party, but he has returned with a campaign focused on defending democracy and fighting both the CSA and AFP. They are not in a civil war right now, yes. Even with brute force in consideration, this stance has alarmed the left and the right, which radicals in the US and the Union's political crisis might turn even worse. We'll see what happens then. The elections in the Republic of Italy have ended with the election of Prime Minister Luigi Emanuele, head of the Partito Libero Italiano. The new Prime Minister has assured the people, both foreign and domestic, that he will be able to resolve the Black Ma Monday crisis. It seems that the former Prime Minister Iveno Bonomi's attempts to consolidate power in the face of the Black Monday has failed. Oh, that's sad. I'm not gonna shed any tears. You are guaranteed defending the coasts. You can have... No, I think I should try an Austrian game one from these days. Okay, so, next on our agenda... Let's go with the radio. People need music, it rises morale. And they flock to the battlefield, that's why we have a reinforcement raid. Okay, what about you? Well, most of us are ahead of time. I could go with Recon Company. I won't be able to place any, but I guess I can go for that. And next we're gonna go for field hospitals and maybe some truckies, because we need some motorized for the hospitals. Still no factories, I'm afraid. Okay, I am going to... Actually... We don't need any more artillery, which means that we can take some pressure off this, this, and leave it on this. So how long will it take for you to reinforce completely? 380 days. Simple enough? We're going with no allies here, so... Maybe Albania or Turkey will send us some troops. There's the Bulgarian hegemony. and expand the reserves. There we go. The Bulgarian land forces has always been known for its vast reserves of manpower. Uh, yeah, sure. With the, uh, with the potentially importing title of Greek, Romanian, Serbian and Turk soldiers, it is clear that we must expand our manpower reserves so that every able-bodied Bulgarian will be ready to defend his country. Go. The Bulgarian hegemony. 
we must turn our gaze towards the maintaining of the hegemony in the Balkans, in order to preserve the Bulgarian Golden Age. As it stands, we are surrounded by cardinals of the Iron God Romanian, who seeks to take our rightful land, and the Greeks in the south, who also claim that it is rightfully ours. Uh, also claim land that is rightfully ours. In addition, Serbia has helped stoke the fires of revanchism, trying to secure its own hegemony in the Balkans. We cannot allow them to succeed. We shall fight. Till the last dying breath. Hmm. Romania and Serbia are fine. The Tsar's open secret. In an open secret about the Tsar, Tsar Ferdinand I, is that he himself is bisexual. Okay, rumors have been spread. Oh wow, have been spread and discussed about the Tsar, especially with the regards of him taking frequent holidays on the carpool. Indeed, it is well known by many that the Tsar does have some sexual interest, and this has caused many ca scandals for the royal family. So what can we do about that? Nothing. Then political power isn't that bad. Two hundred days here, and three hundred and thirty days here. Okay, let's hope we actually have enough to reinforce in time before a great war for the Balkans starts. There is the concentrated industry. We have expanded the reserves. Okay, let's go here, here, and then. Definitely here. So start. Establish uh, Quibri. We have a lot of intel apparently. Speaking of intel, when can we research the next radio? Computing machines. Well, one here for now. American Union States declared war. Okay, there's the civil war. So let's see how this will go. You can see some remnants of Americans yet. And there's the Californian Republic. The Pacific State of America. <laughs> Democracy prevails in the Philippines, the second American civil war. Having just achieved independence from the United States, the Philippines face today perhaps one of the most serious challenges any new country could face. Inspired by the combined syndicalists of the Americas and the Commune, the scrunt of army officers marched on Manila to support the rebellion peasants and workers. Their attempts was quickly thrown, as low as the, uh, <coughs> as the loyalists units in the army Rapperment, their support for the intervented in favor of the legitimate. Uh, okay, I need to drink something. <laughs> Just a sec. Right. Inspired the combined syndicalist of America and the Baharia Commune. Disgruntled army officers marched on Manila um, to support the rebelling peasants and workers. Their attempt was, their attempt was quickly thrown as loyalist units in the army reframed their support for the intervention in favor of the legitimate democracy, Filipino government, and drove the rebellious army out of the capital, ending the threat of syndical scope before it could even hatch. The United States taught them well. New champion for democracy right there. Sure, let's go with it. The Second American Civil War. The uneducated foreigners, it might seem that uh, the crisis in the United States happened out of nowhere, but experts agree that this was a civil war years in the making. We'll take a look at that. Should we go for fighters? I say yes. I know we are not producing them, but we might later. Ever since the collapse of the New York Stock Exchange in 1925, the economy of the United States has been in 
Yeah. Oh well. There's the delay. Elastic defense. My favorite defense. And go work with the Arsenal AD. Let's go with that. So, Serbia, what are you researching? The Crown the King. So, they're gonna have a kingdom. And you're social liberals, that's okay. Does Greece have any trees? I mean, does it have a. No, it doesn't. Okay, that's sad. Every other Balkan nation has one. Even the Albanians. Okay, Serbia crowns King Alexander II since the end of the Austrian occupation during the 1920s. Serbia has officially been a uh, kingdom. They never dare to crown a king as they were forced to keep a low profile in the light of the further Austrian Austrian aggression. Peter Bujovic, the regent of Serbia for most two, uh, two decades and a known royalist, has now decided to restore the monarchy. Alexander II, the son of the former king Peter I, has accepted the crown and was today crowned as King of Serbia. This controversial move is likely to upset the Austrians and the Bulgarians. Of course it is. The 3rd of March, 1878. Oh, now you're gonna get that event. Bulgaria had been liberated and properly established as a state with the, sickness, with the signing of the Treaty of San Stefano, supported by the Honorable Peter. The autumn Empire was forced to give Bulgaria most of its territories large, uh, later on, following the Treaty of Berlin. In 1878, the Principality of Bulgaria alongside Eastern Rumelia was established by the powers of Europe. In 1908, we would go on to declare our independence. Bulgaria, rejoice! We shall stand strong, but we are researching... yeah. So we should have manpower in a moment. Any moment now. There you go. How many manpower do we need here? None. Okay, so we actually have what we needed. The rest will come in time. And you should probably wait a little bit. We need 500 artillery pieces for that. Okay, and we also need a hundred days of peace for the guns. I'm gonna wait a little. Mostly because I need to train my troops right now. Okay, what do you mean we lack? No, it doesn't matter that much. Some are goods, that's awesome. Okay, let's go this way. So, we're waiting for the troops to be ready, all of them. A monument to the unknown hero. So, can we beat them with this army? I am actually not certain. Maybe I messed up a little. So, do we have a radio next? Good. What do we need for this? Well, we have to wait two years in order for them to become relevant and advanced mechanical tools, that's fine. I wonder, should I go for the radio or maybe I should research some planes? You know, we are gonna have a navy maybe. And I want some battleships. Or maybe submarines. Should I go for submarines? Oh, yeah. Let's go with the battleship. Do we have any admirals? Well, we do have one. Ivan Petrov.
Cloudy's telling Steve. Alrighty, alright. So we are still waiting for basically nothing. We will reinforce, that would be great. A thousand more guns is needed. 70 days for that. Yeah, we will have enough guns before the war in the Balkans starts. 240 days. Well, I uh, well, I would not. Bulgaria and Byzantium were historically enemies. Also, Byzantium was never the name of the nation. And also, we don't have such a action, political action. So, I'm sorry to say that's not going to happen. Though I will probably capture Adrianapolis, or Edirne as it is now known. The second international. Great. First, let's go with this. The first syndicalist international held in Paris dealt with the spreading of the ideology overseas, supporting the syndicalist movements and strengthening the ties between the existing syndicalist nation and, thanks to the gathering's success, the Sankard International has been called to be held in London. Okay, who leaves London again? Oh, right, this guy. Uh, the first syndicalist international held in Paris, yes. Representatives from the entire world were greeted by a British artillery salute, a Scottish bagpipe, and a horse. Okay, partial mobilization it is. We are strong. Just don't call it Crimsantium. Okay, I wasn't going to. Because this is not CK2. Callous Spain declare war on the Kingdom of Spain. Oh, look at that, the civil war in Spain is not. Oh, hello. Serbia. Oh, Serbia. You're just making a big mistake here. So you'd know. So what are we doing? We're gonna wait for this, then I'm gonna research this because I need some defenses there. Let's release our men in Varna and then send them here. Do we have enough to support this? Foundation of the Belgrad Pact. Oh, Romania didn't join the pack? Well, that's lovely. Okay, Serbian, Romanian and Greece, the three Balkan members of the Entente, all with ranches and bills on their own, have recently gathered to come on the table to negotiate, while Romania has distanced itself from creating a military alliance. Serbian and Greece announced the beginning of the Belgrade Pact. This pact puts a lot of focus on control discussion and preserving the Balkan identities, but it also seemingly directs other countries separating them and holding the ancestral lands. Yeah, well, do you know how big Great Bulgaria was? I just bring that out out of nowhere. Okay, where were we? This new development is a big thorn in Bulgaria's domination of the Balkans, but only the incoming reaction of the other central powers can determine whether it will yield any fruit. This can't be good. On the initiative Serbia, civilian countries have converged to the Belgrade to discuss the political and military situation on the Balkans. During this Congress, new military alliance was founded and so-called Bulgarian Pact. This is clearly aimed against us, out of revenge for their loss in the Veld Creek. We can only hope our former Central Power allies will support us in this. The thing is that I actually don't care who controls the Balkans, or in fact, the world. 
as long as my people prosper, whoever my people turn out to be this day. Because as we all know, it's not the nation that we should care about, it's the people. So, Serbia and Greece. Oh, oh. Uh, we have enough of those and... Should we train for a day or so? I mean... Yeah, here's the problem. If we train a day, we are gonna have a modifier which is not minus 25%. Now, here's also something we might encounter if Romania decides to attack us during this war. We will be disadvantaged. But the German Empire supports us, so that's great. For some reason. Talk to me. Well, maybe I I don't know. Let's try them. And the Spanish Civil War continues. Apparently, those guys are a little bit late to the party, so they are gonna win. Okay, come on. There we go. Do I even need that anymore? I don't think I do. Let's go here. Can I take Greece with only 5 divisions? Well, 6. Can I take him with 6 divisions? We shall see in a moment. Oh, they know which hand at the gun to point. I mean, they do fight with bayonets. Those are Bulgarian ships. Okay, man, make sure every Greek and Serbian that step on Bulgarian land suffers a painful death. Oh, so we could just drop you. There's the ultimatum. Um, war? Wonderful. Okay. Let's wait, there's Greece attacking us. You attack here. I want you to attack here, here, and then here. And you. Why not attack here and here? You go here and here. And we wait. The Ford Balkan War. A country was born in the Balkan of uh, the Balkans. Great, and our stability just fell because we decided to go to war. We're defending our nation. You should stand united, dammit. Okay, Greater Bulgaria, the titan of the peninsula. Uniting all Bulgarian lands and beyond, this kingdom for all Bulgarians was born with bloodshed and war. Though defeating Serbia, Greece and Romania in the Vel Creek, a move that these three nations are still bitter about today. This tension led to the formation of the Belgrade Pact. This alliance of Balkan states has now declared war on the Tsardom, drawing the region into conflict yet again. Will Tsar Boris III? Sure. Uh, save his nation from this overwhelming forces, or will this kingdom be divided once more? Morris will save us, yeah, but he's not even the field marshal. Should we appoint him as a field marshal? I mean, he's not an old guard. You know what? Yeah, let's have Boris defend the nation. Hey, Greeks. Let's see how smart you really are. We are going to take this. Uh, you can stop attacking. Just support attack, so you won't move out of position. So, Serbians, your turn. What should we do with you? Let's move away from Skopje. No, no, stay there. Stay there. Come, stay there. Good. Good. Now wait. Are you gonna go here before us? Maybe. Maybe. 
I want you two to attack this place. Oh, they took it good. And when will you be there? Three hours. Alright guys, surround them. They dug their graves. Might as well bury them. It's the polite thing to do. Bury them under the rebel. Okay, it doesn't matter. Now attack from all directions. You go and attack here. And you attack this. You two hold it and attack together. Help them if you can. There we go. And go here. Uh, support attack. Right, so when you are attacking someone, I'm gonna place it to you. Click on an army which is next to this region. Control and click on this circle right here towards the support attack. But only when you are attacking. When you are defending, it doesn't work. Well, that's most of the Serbian army, actually. Oh, and we won this accidentally. So, I have a question. Why are you still alive? You have no supplies and cycled and multiple combat. That's minus 50, 70, over 100. Oh, wow. You, go here. Um. Well, if there are more units on the Greek border, Greeks will fall. But right now we are concentrated on the Serbians. They are the immediate threat right now. I want you to support this, you as well. Okay, you can go to Larissa. If this actually works, I'll be very happy. Oh, I don't. Oh, well, it doesn't matter, just take Larissa then. And you go here and hold. I still want you to kill them all. Oh, and uh, right. Let's see. What should we have? Examining the budget. The budget. Good. Washington has fallen. Yeah, that's right. Get out of my land. Construction, maybe. Maybe. Support weapons. Hmm. Yeah, let's go with construction. Just fix the lines right here. No, she'll be good. Yeah, you can hold this line if you want. Oh, and there you go. Serbia just lost most of its army. Let's see if they're gonna fall for that once more. Yes, they will. Good, good. Just wait for those guys to go away, and move there, and when you go there. Okay, you're done. Oh, look at them trying to escape, that's adorable. It's only seven divisions, is it enough? Yes, it is, good.
Okay, we're in position. Crush them under the Bulgarian hammer. You're not gonna move from Nish? Okay. I guess that's fair. Well, now that we actually have enough political power... Sure. And they don't have any truth anymore to defend their border, so let's attack here and here, and you stay there. No, no, everyone here. Why, why did you decide to go there? Good. Okay, cut them off. And this war just ended quickly. Very quickly instead. So. Um, okay, I want you to go here and here. You stay here. Brilliant. Niche, you attack here, go here, here, and then just wait. There are field hospitals, good. Okay, there's the radio. There and there. Let's maintain the military pensions, because why not? Yeah, I just want to kill them all. Okay, new fighters. And... Should I go for tanks? You know, let's have some tanks. Say, Grace, you're not even gonna try anymore, are you? Are you even defending your capital? Can I just take all of that and be done with the Serbians and probably the Greeks? Battleship level 1, we searched. Good. Go for level 2. There we go. And there goes Serbia. And they actually didn't have any weapons. But we stole all their support equipment. That's nice. Syndicalism spreads in Burma. Following the stirring of a poor decision by the Burmese government, culminating in the order of the Royal Burmese Army to open a fire on protesting students, and workers, the entire country turned against the royalists. The newly founded nation council is now form, uh, forming a new syndicalist government and is supportably already considering looking outwards for strong like-minded allies. Okay, Serbia, all of you is ours, and Greece, that's because you joined them, we're gonna keep all your lands as well. A very quick war, actually. Should I convert some troops to mountaineers, though? I mean, I, I never use mountaineers. Hey, Greece. Welcome. There's an increase in stability. Yeah, people love it because I annexed Greece. Not so much about Serbia, though. Okay, let's place you in the Chernomorsky flot, and by the way, Germany never supported us. They did promise, but never did.
Right, so, that was fun, and I think I'm going to end this episode here. So, thank you all for joining me, and I'm going to see you all next time. Goodbye.